to Conversations in Gen with Maria Fisher and Jennifer Wolfenden. Today our guest is Sandra Pelly. Hi, Sandra. Hello. And welcome to our Hi, show. Sandra. Welcome, Sandra. <laughs> We're so happy to have you on here. But you have an interesting story from what I read. You, you, you were injured horribly in probably what I think it's the prime of life as you saw it, you know, and um, you, you, you're, you're, you're in, in front of us on Zoom, you've got a big smile on, you look great, you've got great skin, so tell us how you, <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> she does. That was one of the obvious things, you know, yeah, great, you got great skin, great skin, yeah. great hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us hey, your so, story. Uh, how did you... Tell us your story. Yeah. How, how did so you bump you from that, that moment? Life? Well, uh, interesting enough, um, I was I was truly in the prime of my life. My son at the time was nine. Uh, in fact, no, he was. Uh, let me think here. Three. He was uh, eight when it happened, and my daughter was three years old. Okay. And so I, I was, you know, outside playing street hockey with my son. I was going on major hikes with him. I was part of uh, the schooling as in, in, in that I was going into the school and having a lot of fun. Uh, uh, I can't remember what the word is. Um, I wasn't a teacher, but I was coming in and helping to well, facilitate. You were a teacher's assistant. A teacher's assistant, yes. Not a professional teacher's assistant, but I was going in and taking part yeah, in the class. No problem. Yeah, I, I think they call you, you, were the getting into, you were getting you in your kid's business at school, <laughs> as every parent should. <laughs> yes, I love it exactly. Yeah, I was being very much a, a role model for other parents, let's put it that way. And uh, my daughter was three at the time and, you know, carrying her around, playing actively on the floor with her and, and just really loving life. And um, my son played hockey at the time as well, too. So really involved as a parent doing that. Mm -hmm. And then one day at work. I was up a uh, step ladder going up to get a box down for the old type of computers. Now, some of you are might be young enough that you don't know what I'm talking about with regards to uh, No, I think, I, think that, I think you made a mistake on that one. Listen, I remember the, I, I remember the, I remember the one, the Gersmeiser or whatever, you had to put the um, little thing on it. Yeah. Well, um, you, know. you know where I'm at. So I we, went up we the were ladder. Never, we're all over 50s. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Uh, grab the grab the box that was supposed to be uh, putting the putting the computer in because I was going to be going away on a course. And as I was coming down the ladder, I thought I was on the bottom step, and I turned and I stepped off. And as it turns out, I was actually two steps up. So oh, if God. you can envision that, um, mm -hmm. my one foot was up here. And the ground was down oh, yeah. here when I should have been stepping down from here. And when I when I yes. stepped off, the pelvis looks like this. And what happened is, is this foot landed on the ground. So it was just like that. So notice it dropped already. But okay. this foot was on the step. So the it was actually step. like this. So oh. both sides dislocated on me. Oh. And I remember oh. my foot hitting the ground and thinking, oh, oh, oh. oh. And then now, I. What, what part of your foot hit the ground? Uh, the, the, I actually landed beautifully with my left foot. It, it was perfect. I, I just put my foot down just like I'd have been. She says I landed beautifully as if you were doing like a pirouette. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, except that this is what happened. Uh, I realized yeah, exactly. immediately that I was in trouble. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so were you what in pain the... at this point, I, I presume? Was I in pain? Is that what you asked me? yes oh yeah yeah and i <laughs> i uh i remember calling my dad and i mean what is what's the first thing a, a a person does they call somebody who you know supports them and i called my dad i i need a ride to the clinic um in hindsight i should have called an ambulance uh that isn't yeah, what we happened we always though. do that we always we we do that often it's it's actually a natural thing um because i find um when I was, when I used to take CPR, they used to always say that, you know, whenever you're in, whenever people are in crisis time, they reach for like some familiarity. Yeah. Now, um, Sandra, when you, 
you came off that ladder, you landed on your left foot, you are you're on the floor. I'm thinking if your pelvis dislocated, your body parts is like, I mean, separated. What are you feeling on the ground? Like you are on the ground and what are, what are you thinking? You, you know something horribly wrong is gone. Wrong. You know you're horribly hurt and yeah. you're calling your dad, but, but what are you thinking? At this point in time, like what do you think has gone wrong? You know what, I, I really had no idea because because like I said, the first foot landed on the ground very nicely, but then of course the other foot was two steps up. So I brought that one down and then I had both feet, I was standing, but the okay. pain radiating in my, what would be called the pubis symphys, which is where, where your pubis bone comes together. Yes. Um, oh, in the Lord. front area there, where the pain was excruciating and I had no idea what I had done or, or anything. Um, and it actually, it took a solid year. It took a solid year of going to Okay, so many... your dad comes, and do okay. you guys now call 911? No, no. I, I, <laughs> I struggle to get into his vehicle. Mm -hmm. And he drives me to the clinic, not the hospital. We actually drive by the hospital uh, <laughs> okay. to, to the clinic. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It, this is the point where you kind of go, I should have called 911. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, you know what? Here I've reached out to my biggest support system in my mind. Yes. And what does he do? He drops me off at the door and goes home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you're like, I, now I should have called 911. So I, I tried to get in the door. Like, I, I there was like, you guys, I can't even begin to explain to you what this was like. This is like, like, okay, so it's the pelvis. Now, when you think of the pelvis, you're just thinking of the bone structure, but it's literally all the muscles that is the very core of your system. So it's all your, your uh, lower leg muscles, upper leg muscles, your internal like organ area and the, the frame that's holding everything together. So to yeah, do so everything anything, that's connecting your hip, your hip bones that's connected to your your um, thing like funny your... game. <laughs> <laughs> so even pulling the door open to get into the clinic. Oh, so they didn't have open. automatic doors yet? <laughs> they still don't do that. <laughs> and this is now 20 years later. Um, so, so yeah, went in and I mean, that's when I really started to, to uh, question what I had done because I, I couldn't even get it in the door. I had to wait for somebody to come by to open the door because as I said, my dad had driven away. <laughs> well, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Do you know what? I find that um, when you don't see blood, you mm. don't equate it with, a, with, with urgency or an emergent or, or urgent. An emergency, so, yes. But there, you know, I mean, I actually had a teacher say to me, and, and, and I'll make this really short. She actually said to me in a situation in, in a classroom, when I, when I said to her, you know, that's, you know, th this is, um, this is violent, uh, violence among children. She said, well, unless there's blood and bruising, we don't report it. And so, you know, it, it goes back to what you're saying. Like your, your dad did not see any blood and he didn't see any bruising. Yeah, he and so in his okay, mind, maybe you have worried a little bit of pain, but you would be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about what happened. So you get, you get to the hospital, you, you finally get to the, the hospital. hospital. No, nope, never, ever, never. I never went to the hospital. I, the only time I went to the hospital was multiple trips in the weeks that followed for pain. Okay, so so are you? So at this point, you're at the clinic. Yes. And yeah. what does the clinic tell you? Um, well, they take a look at me and they send me up for an X-ray and uh, essentially wash their hands of me because they really have no idea how to diagnose me. They they don't even they're not even really sure so of what. No, they don't either. No, no. Uh, this is a small town, ten thousand people, kind of thing. Not, not that that justifies them. Hey, not Sandra, calling. I was going to say, Sandra, I don't care if there's two people in the town. Yeah. They need to call nine one one when there's an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That brings up so much emotion in me because it really makes me feel like I'm being validated because I spent. <sighs> Thank you for letting me get real. I spent yeah. so many years disbelieving the seriousness of my injury because nobody could diagnose it and nobody paid attention to the the signs 
that I was yeah. displaying and the voice that I was trying to tell everybody yeah. about. So thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, you know what, I think, I think one of the things that happens is that we, somewhere in the back of the mind, we, we've been taught that the medical system is above us yeah. and that whatever they say is law and is Bible. And it comes back to what my husband says, you are your own doctor. Only you know exactly what's going on with you. And I just want to take a minute here to apologize for a couple of things. I'm sorry your dad didn't really understand that how sick you were and he, you know, dropped you off. I really understand. I feel like if he knew how sick you were and how, how injured you were, I feel like he would have stayed. But I apologize for those people that did not help you when it was their expertise to help you. Yeah, I mean, this is the problem. Um, I'm sorry to interject. Um, the problem is that we, that physicians only know what they know and they don't know what they don't know. And they really truly don't know a lot. Yeah. They know what they were taught. They have a, um, if they're a GP, a GP, they know the general um, things, but they don't know anything beyond that. Yeah. And we think they do because they have this title of doctor. And, and honestly, so we, 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 we make assumptions on what they should or should not know. I did the same thing. I went to the, when I had the stroke, when I was having the numbness in my jaw, I went to the doctor. I didn't go to the hospital. And yeah. he told me I was having having a tension headache and he told me to go home and get some rest and the next morning yeah. I woke up and had a stroke so um I, I completely understand your situation yeah and so how somebody who was supposed to have knowledge did not have the knowledge but and you know the thing about fault, Sandra no and it's not your fault they I mean you know there and very rarely do I ever hear a doctor say you know what I honestly don't know what's wrong with you. Can I get some help on finding out what's wrong with you? And that wasn't done for you. And so tell me about, it took you a year. Tell me about them, not, them saying, look, we don't know what's wrong with you. We're washing our hands off of you. You're at the clinic. Go from there. Uh, okay, so in, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, in that next year, I actually went to seven other professionals, uh, pain management clinics, nerve damage, all when kinds. When did of you go to the hospital? That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> honestly i i went i went uh, i went that day for an x-ray i oh, went okay. that day for pain meds uh but but to ever get the uh, diagnosis exactly yeah not not really ever um just in the continuing of the uh, me showing up at the door in severe agony and getting shots of demerol um nobody ever diagnosed me during that, so at this that time, they didn't, do, uh, they didn't do any kind of, they did an x-ray. What did the x-ray show? <laughs> uh, comically enough, uh, there's another whole end of this involved. This happened at work, so work medical came into effect. And the WCB, the Workman's Compensation Board. Yeah, WSIB, this, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They decided that, oh, this is a pre-existing condition. No. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and and uh, yeah, so I mean, there's that whole other side of it, and and that of course complicated the oh, feeling ultimately. of me it's not feeling the care that you needed. And so believing that there was something wrong with me, I was just starting to disbelieve that 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 mentally I was starting to disbelieve there was something wrong with me. Physically, I knew there was something, but mentally, yeah, it was it was dark. Yeah, but that pain tells it all, honey. That pain tells it all. I always say, you know, I can do anything, but when pain comes, that that write me off. I I, I can't deal with the pain. Yeah, exactly. So you were feeling so now, pain, and at this point, yeah. nobody was assisting you. Nobody was um giving you any kind of um information to understand the pain that you were going through. And so, what were you doing? Were you just functioning normally and living with the pain? Okay. I was living with the pain. I was not functioning normally. I was incapable of walking. I was incapable of carrying a dinner plate. I all I all I did for that full solid year was lay on the couch in complete and utter agony. My three year old was no longer even allowed to play in the living room because the vibration of her playing mm. on the floor wow. vibrated through the furniture and into my body, and it was. Wow. I couldn't pick her up. I couldn't go play with my child. This is the constant trips to the hospital for, for major painkillers. 
the, the silver lining in these hospital chips though, is even though nobody ever said, hey, you know what, we should dig further into this. Um, I actually came across a guy in one of these trips, a attending paramedic who said, you know what, this looks familiar to me. I think you should go and see so-and-so at such and such a clinic in this city because this looks really familiar to me. I, I've seen this before. Okay. So mm -hmm. I booked an appointment with this person. Yes. And, uh, got a call. I, I, and essentially what happened is, is uh, I had booked the appointment. It was going to be for the end of January, which is like a year, solid year into this injury. And I got a call on January 3rd on a Monday morning and said, you know what? We just had a cancellation at 11 o'clock this morning. Can you get in here? And um, I, that was three hour drive. It was eight in the morning and it was a three hour drive. I was incapable of sitting in a vehicle for that amount of time. And I said, yes, and burst into tears so sobbing. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, I, I don't want to get into the whole, like, you guys are letting me talk about this. I haven't talked to, in this depth about this in a long time because I actually had to go 10, 15 years after the fact to go get help because I, I was so much guilt being carried for having yeah. had this company, et cetera, right? No, you don't have to feel any guilt. Um, you didn't know. We don't know what we don't know, Sandra. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I think one thing that we know. And before I had a stroke, I didn't know anything about strokes. Jennifer yeah. didn't know about strokes. We, we yeah. learn through the process of going through the healing and the re recovery. Yeah. We, believe me, you know more than whoever di whoever diagnosed you because you lived it. You yeah. felt the pain. You felt the idea. You no, you do not know which bone was what or what, you know. You couldn't do a self-diagnosis on that, on that level, but you knew something was wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Not, but you know I, I feel like you were, you know, I feel like you were punished for being ill by WSIB. And I won't dwell on that too much, but at this point in time, it's a double whammy. You're, you're, you're very ill. Um, you're in a lot of pain. Um, no one believes you. WSIB has, is, has basically criminalized you by saying, you know, there's no injury. There's nothing wrong with you. You're lying. Um, take us to um, a year later when this lovely young man tells you, you know what, I've seen this before. Yeah. So essentially what happened is, is uh, I got in the vehicle, my husband drove because I was incapable of driving. Uh, mm -hmm. And we went to the city, we went to this, this, uh, this um, physio station. And the woman had me stand up and take my shirt off. And she looked at my back. She stood about five feet behind me, looked at my back and she said, your pelvis is dislocated on both sides. Let's do something about that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, thank wow. God. Yeah. So wow. um, just, just to give you an understanding of what happened from there is uh, she called in two men. She had me lay on my belly on a, uh, you know, the medical bed which was or, agony because please, you can imagine that if your pelvis is trying to snap it back into place or something. Yeah. If oh, my okay. pelvis was out of place. So this is now jutting out and she's having me lay full bore on a bone that's in the wrong place. Right. So yeah. that was agony. And she had a man, a full grown adult man lay on my, my back. Mm -hmm. And then wow. her and the other man grabbed both of my legs at the ankles and yanked. Oh, put my pelvis back into place. Oh, hold on. I'm feeling, hold on, hold on. Wait, I'm in pain right now. <laughs> I know. We, we oh. both folded our, uh, Sandra, we both folded our, our arms. <laughs> and everything, right? <laughs> oh. so, so from there, I honestly, I had to relearn how to walk because I had been walking around with these tiny little steps my foot had not been lifting. My knees had not been lifting. I had been just making these almost dragging motions of my feet. And I had to relearn how to walk, relearn how to stand, relearn okay, how to you everything. Did, that, did they not have to, um, okay, so did that realign your, your pelvis? Yeah. What they did? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that pain was worth it. That pain was worth it? That pain, in all honesty, was nothing compared to what I'd been living with. 
for that and solid for that year. Sandra, um, we are we're going to be out of town very soon, but mm. I don't want to miss the rest of your story. So tell me, um, take us from from the 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 I went living in one year in pain. Now she's realigned your pelvis. Tell us about what's happening in the family because the children have been without you. Your husband has been without you. Now we know what's wrong with you. Take us take us from there to the next you know ten years. For sure. Um, my, my, actually my son who was eight, nine years old at the time, he actually took over running the house and the family, uh, during that time, believe it or not, my husband oh, was working 24 nice seven, of course, gotta love children, you know, uh, yeah. my daughter essentially feels and, and gives him credit for raising him, raising her during wow. that time, which is such a beautiful relationship they have. And then in the, in the That's years nice. that have followed since then, um, I have gone to non-traditional medicine rather than Western medicine and had healings done that way. Uh, okay, you know, so with you've energy. you never had any kind of, any form of surgery? No. no. Oh, okay. Is, is that because this thing, this situation has to realign on its own? Yeah. Almost like um, if you have floating ribs, they have That's to realign correct. on their own? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have to live with pain. So what, what are they giving you? Are they giving you the good stuff or what? <laughs> okay. No, no. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, actually, I was on a lot of painkillers. Um, like I said, I was going to the shots, to the hospital for shots of Demerol, and I was still after that for a number of years. Uh, yeah. then, then there was Toradol. Then there was a set of You weren't getting um, Oxy or whatever? <laughs> uh, no, I, I tried that one, I think, and it, it just didn't agree with me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tramacet, though. Uh, uh, yeah, I was doing that one, a couple of different ones. Um, and essentially I started to decide for myself, like, okay, I, I can continue to live like this in complete, you know, um, trying to get my body back into whatever mentally and, and just live with it the way it is, or start to be proactive with doing something with it. And, and just like probably both of you have gone through, there's, there's things that we've each had to do and continually yeah. keep doing to build up a tolerance to doing it as well, or to, to rebuild those pathways. Yeah. Um, just like rebuilding the pathways in your brain for learning how to re-speak if you, if, depending on how bad the stroke is, I had yeah. to learn how to walk. Your body had to realign itself. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they realigned it when they grabbed my legs. Were you going to car <laughs> doing chiropractic care? Like how, what were oh, you yeah. doing with these alignments? Yeah, so, so they did it the once, and then after that, those muscles had to be retrained to be in the natural place. So I was going to, uh, um, like, I, I'm just, I can't recall the names of what it is. Physiotherapist? The, pardon me? A physiotherapist? Yeah, there was physiotherapist involved, but there's also another type of physio uh, chiropractor, but it's not well, moving also, bone. Also no, it's not that either. I can't remember what it's okay. called. It, it's something more along the uh, <laughs> Active release technique is is kind of like what it is, and what they do is is where the pain is in the body, um, they apply a, almost like acupressure, right? They apply pressure, and okay. it, and they move the body through a range of motion, yes. so that the body begins to yes. recognize. I know very much about that because my daughter was a runner and she tore her groin, so I know about the active release technique. Yes. So that's what I'm talking about is that I, I did years of active release, like it's called art, active release technique. And uh, now so, I'm an uh, I'm well, avid mountain bike. And, and active and, um, and like physio. Physio, yeah, physio and, and, and that, yeah. yeah. Sandra, you are an avid mountain biker. So tell me about um, between that the day you fell, how many more years later did you finally get on a mountain bike? How many years later was it that you actually sat on a, a bike? Gosh. Probably nine years. Nine yeah. years. Okay, so my question um, is um, related to the WSIB. So WCB is what we call it here in Alberta. Oh, okay. So, so the WCB, um, now you go back to work. Are they paying for your care? Uh, you know what? Uh, they had always maintained that it was a pre-existing injury. I actually took them to court 
and one a case where they pay paid me back pay for the Very amount good. of time that I was working there. Yeah. Very good. Good for you. Good for you. Thanks for being brave and taking them to court. Yeah. Thanks well, for I had to. Brave. Be, well, you know, so many of us, we, we don't have the courage when we're in pain. We don't have the courage to hold other people accountable. And you found the courage to hold them accountable. So thanks for doing that. Yeah. So you, so nine years later, Sandra, you get back on a mo mountain bike. What does it feel like? <laughs> I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have been making the effort. Like I said about, you know, retraining the body. I have been getting on an exercise bike. But when I when I say I've been getting on an exercise bike, I mean I was getting on, and after a minute or two minutes, it was all that my body could handle. So I oh, had to were, really. Were you getting on like more of a spin bike or like an incumbent, like the one that sits on the floor? Both, both. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because the sitting is so difficult, so that like it, yes. it was just yeah one thing after the other. But now I'm riding. Uh, I do like uh, what. Uh, last year, I did 2,600 kilometers last year on my mountain bike, on, on trails and stuff. So I'm, and, I'm slowly back. Oh, so, I'm so Sandra, to what, what is it, tell me about life today, because we're, we're running out of time. But tell me about life today. What does that look like? What, because we, we've got a great picture of your injury, and we've got a great picture of you being flat on the floor. And uh, we've seen you recover. We've, we've got a good picture of you recovering over the past, the nine years. But tell us about it today. You've got a book out. So don't forget to tell us about your book. I have yes. a book, a spiritual how-to. Uh, yeah. This book actually came uh, into existence because of that. The, the last two, two or three pages literally has uh, kind of like a, a, a from the injury date to the different oh, things that were happening. The to, that you took to get to get to here. Yeah. 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 So tell us and, what you're doing but, today. Okay, if you were going to give us a percentage of your healing, your recovery, what, what percentage would you say you've recovered? I would say I'm probably 95% back. 95. Thank God. Yeah. Okay, thank no goodness. surgery. No thank surgery. God is good. Yeah. And, and there were definitely points in my recovery where I was very conscious of the fact that if I continued on in the way that I had been going, that I would be going into my seniorhood in a very poor position. And oh, I, I made the conscious yeah. decision to be proactive in my life to make very my good. life better. And I think that goes for you ladies as well. You, you yeah. guys made the decision that you wanted to, well, to live a normal um, life. I'm gonna, I, I wish I had, um, you know, um, I watched um, President Obama give um, Joe Biden the um, Medal, of, Medal of Freedom. Um, Four years ago, I watched it just by chance today, but I wish I could. Get, I had a medal to give you because, dear Lord, I cannot even imagine yeah. that pain. Yeah. I mean, we only know it from childbirth. We yeah. don't know it from, um, you know, um, having a damage. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I, I can only hold my tip my hat to you and and say I'm just so thankful that you were able to find a way to work through this. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But Sandra, I want to, I want you to tell our viewers what you do today because it's so exciting to hear what you, where you've come from. So tell us about, tell us about a day in the life of Sandra today or oh, in the last year. For tell sure. Tell us what you've been doing. Tell us what you've been doing. A in the day last in the life of Sandra. Year. I love that. Uh, you know what? We are actually living the life of our dreams. We are living in our fifth wheel, our travel trailer. We travel all over the place. Right now, we're kind of sad in one place because it's winter in, in Canada. Uh, but we are traveling all over the place, living our dream, mountain biking wherever we want. And, and this relationship that I have with my husband has grown so much oh, that's because that's of my experiences. That's such yeah. a blessing. You know, it's funny, you know, um, I, I'm, you know, I, I always bring up church because I grew up in church. You know, they say that God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. And all the things that he has done. Yeah. I mean, putting you through, yes, you went through the pain, but sometimes you have to go through the pain to go through, to get to the, to the, the, the pinnacle of where you're supposed to be. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know why he chose that avenue for you. I do. Can you I do? Tell, oh, tell, yeah, I tell do. Him. I do. Tell, tell us, Sandra. So, tell us. So th this happened in January 2000. Okay, in in uh, Jan, sorry, in uh, uh, September through to December, and coming into January, 
my sister and I and my dad had been talking about going on this major hike, a backpacking hike, where we would go and we would have backpacks and we'd be camping out in the wilderness for at least three to five nights. So I got injured and we found out in September of that same year, like we were supposed to go in, in July. And mm -hmm. in September of that year, we found out that my dad was in dire, dire need of a quadruple bypass. If wow. we'd have gone on that hike, he would have died. died. He would have died. Wow. Thank you, wow. God. Thank you. Thank Lord. God. So he, he thought out ahead of time and <laughs> wanted you to have your dad a little bit longer. Yes. Uh, yes. And he's with me still today. Amen. He's 85. Yeah. Wow. And Sandra, you bond with, you 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 with your husband, you grew your bond with your father, and your relationship with your children is strong, and you're 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 getting you're like you fought the fight, girl. You fought the fight and you did it on your own. But Sandra, I want to give you the last word to our viewers. If uh, tell our viewers. Is there something you want to leave with them? Should there be someone out there in your situation that just feels strongly there's something wrong with them, but nobody believes them? What would you say to that person? Don't give up. Don't give up. You know it in your heart. Trust yourself. Trust yourself ultimately and completely trust yourself. Don't give up one step at a time because somebody will come into your existence ask like these guys say about um yeah, asking so handsome angel that, that that said he had seen this before yeah that god sent for you that's right you to, the, to the tradition yeah. um, was was your gateway to healing yeah Mm -hmm, mm hmm So ask, ask and the book in a in a in a in a sound bite tell us what the book is about in a sound bite. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, I'll read you the back if you like. This sure. book walks you through the simple steps to make positive changes in your life, but with a twist. In between the covers of a spiritual how-to, you will discover easy how-to steps mingled in with the practical life experience of myself. I have put to paper processes that I've learned and how my awareness of something greater began and grew. Spirituality means different things, a personal journey for each person. There's even a chapter on how God fits into this. I offer the processes that I've learned to help you gain greater awareness and deeper connections. That's beautiful. Story. Absolutely beautiful. Well, listen, Sandra, thank you for being on our show. You so Enjoy much. your grandson. It's a grandson you have. One grandson. Okay. You have a granddaughter, a four-year-old granddaughter. Enjoy your granddaughter. Enjoy your children and their families. Enjoy your husband. Um, enjoy hitting the trail when, when you can and um, live life to the fullest because no one needs to tell you that more than you. You already know that. All righty. Well, listen, Thank take you. care and we'll talk Thank soon you. again. All right. Well, I'm very, it's very beautiful. I'm, I'm so pleased to have met you and I'm, I'm very proud of you. And um, you, you just give me the, you, you've given me um, basically a challenge to keep going. Yes. Um, I, I am. Um, I train every day, but you know, it's very, it's, it's a different situation because it's not physical. It's the brain, but, um, you know, some, there's some days you have a bad day and, um, you know, like after hearing your story, I did, it just makes me feel like, you know, Maria, you just have to keep fighting the fight. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We'll keep going because you've inspired us, Sandra. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much.